Good morning and welcome to our safety, health and wellness series on best practices during COVID-19. We've really had an excellent response to these webinars and we're definitely going to continue to work with our local providers to keep you updated on the subject. I want to give a special thanks to the Manitowoc company for their support and helping us put this together. So we'll just move forward and just yesterday with the Manitowoc County Emergency Services Director Travis Walk issued a COVID-19 health alert calling for community action to help stop the spread of the virus in our county. So please everyone do your part. So our topic today is cold or flu, a difficult question. And I have the pleasure of introducing our guest speaker. Dr. Capadice is an occupational medicine physician who has been in practice for over 25 years in Wisconsin. She's the corporate medical director for Aurora, Aurora excuse me, Occupational Health. She did practice in Manitowoc for quite a few years before assuming this corporate role. So welcome, Dr. Capados. Good afternoon, everyone. Can everyone, I hope everyone can see the slides. Um, we're gonna talk about flu and COVID, two of everybody's favorite subjects right now, I'm, I'm sure. Um, we're gonna talk about some differences, transmission, prevention, pretty simple stuff. But what I do have at the end of this presentation, and I believe the chamber said they will make it available to you, is a lot of references. Most of them are coming from the Center for Disease Control or the CDC. Um, in my mind, it's a, that's a very good reference and you just have to be careful when you're going in there that you're getting the most up-to-date. You kind of have to fish around a little bit, but most of these references I've given you are the most up-to-date uh, guidance. Keep in mind though that the guidance changes day to day and so what I say today may not be the truth tomorrow so don't you know hang your hat on that um, which is the hard thing about all of this in regards to COVID. So starting my slides here, oops sorry. So the flu which I, I'm sure most of you are um, familiar with is influenza virus. There's various strains of this virus and every year certain strains are the ones um, responsible for the illnesses that we might get. And also prior to every year, um, the CDC indicates what viruses should be put in the vaccine that is given to us for that year, and, but they're guessing. They're guessing based on data which will be the prevalent um, strains for the, the next year. And so that's what you get in the flu shot when you get the flu. And some years they guess pretty well or they, I, mean, I shouldn't say guess, that's probably not very scientific, but that is kind of what it is. Um, in other years, um, they don't. Uh, I think last year or the year before was not so good. So there was a high prevalence of actual flu disease, despite the fact that people were probably at the same level of uh, vaccine receiving that they had been. So the symptoms that you get with the flu, and we're not talking about what people call the stomach flu, that's, that's a viral illness, but that's not the influenza virus, that's a different um, virus. But people always think that they get, they get the stomach flu, that's the flu, that's, not, it's, that's a misnomer. Anyway, the symptoms are fever or chills, you know, cough, sore throat, congestion, muscle aches, body aches, um, headaches, and fatigue, and then um, I do have a comment about vomiting and diarrhea, which would be the, the gastrointestinal effects, which are more common in children than adults. And remember, children get, can get the flu as well as adults. So as far as symptoms for COVID-19, which again is a virus, the coronavirus um, that everybody's been hearing about since January, um, the symptoms are very similar if you look at the list, the fevers, chills, there's a cough in there, uh, the shortness of breath or difficult breathing, and a lot of that is because of the effect of the virus on the lungs. Fatigue, the body aches, a headache. This new loss of taste or smell is something that was recognized early on um, that was unique to COVID-19 as compared to 
influenza or some of the other uh, SARS viruses that have been identified. Um, and also, it, I'll just say, it, it, it's one of those symptoms that if people get that, it lasts for months after they've had the illness, just because of the neurological effect of it. A sore throat, the congestion or runny nose, no, again, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. Now, the, the gastrointestinal symptoms are a little bit more prevalent with COVID-19 than they are with the flu, just you know, keeping that in mind. So similarities to um, between the two. So <clears throat> as you've heard in the news, people can be asymptomatic and test COVID positive. Um, with the flu, we never really went to that much of a degree to test people to see if they were asymptomatic and had the flu. So um, people can have this varying um, array of symptoms. Some are very severe. Um, and some are, are, as I said, asymptomatic or very or less severe. There's a list here of the symptoms that are shared by COVID-19 and by the flu. Um, sorry, trying to advance this. Okay. Um, again, both as I mentioned, both the COVID-19 and influenza are viruses. Um, both of them ha can have devastating effects on people with chronic illnesses and the elderly. So they target similar things. Um, they're, they're targeting though, it appears that people that are older or people with chronic diseases, especially um, lung diseases, but they've also listed hypertension, um, obesity, as having those chronic conditions as people that are going, possibly gonna have a more severe case of COVID-19 if they do indeed develop it. With the flu, it's, it's kind of like that, but it's, there's not a big um, difference necessarily um, uh, unless the person is very debilitated. Then when they get the flu, then they get a lot uh, sicker. Another similarity though is that um, Immunity is short-lived. This is what we know today. <laughs> um, it appears from antibody testing that has been done in the name of research that if you have a COVID-19 illness, um, you do develop antibodies, but uh, the length of immunity is really not known, but it is thought to be a couple of months because now we're actually starting to see some people getting the disease again who had had it maybe back in March or April. So just because you had COVID-19, yes, you may have some immunity, but please don't bank on that and continue to protect yourself like everyone else so that you don't get it again. Um, kind of a, a side story. Um, somebody was telling me yesterday that um, their relatives live in a subdivision. This is not a Manus walk, so don't be scared. Um, and they, um, most of the subdivision, they're very social, a very social subdivision. Most of them have had uh, the COVID-19 infection. And so they decided for Halloween that not only were they going to have their kids, you know, trick or treat and everything, the, the, the traditional way, but they were going to have one, one group uh, was going to have a party at their house and have 40 people and not wear masks or anything else. Now, this is just stupidity, if you ask me, but that's my opinion based on the science that we know today. You still need to protect yourself. Um, and who knows, those people could be at that party, then go home or go to their elderly parents or grandparents, and you know there still may be some transmission of, of illness. So just something to keep in mind, especially when some people say, well, I had it, so I'm immune, so don't, you know, I don't have to worry about anything. I don't have to wear a mask, et cetera. So differences between the flu um, and COVID-19, um, as I've kind of mentioned before, the flu can be mild to severe uh, with those signs and symptoms that I mentioned. COVID-19 appears to have more serious illness in some people, especially, especially uh, respiratory um, illness as a more severe um, symptom than the flu. Um, and then also you can have that change in loss of taste and smell. We, we all saw what happened with the president where 
Um, who knows what the severity of his illness was, uh, but he was, you know, on supplemental oxygen supposedly and had medications that are more reserved actually for sicker people is what the, all the press says, but you don't know what really happened. Um, but I know there's a lot more people, it appears, have been ending up in the ICU um, because they have pre-existing asthma or something like that and then have contracted the uh, COVID-19 virus. So it's nothing to, to uh, sneeze about or take lightly. Um, again, protect yourself and protect your family. Um, and maybe we can get rid of this dumb thing that's messing up everybody's lives, but there are some silver linings which I might mention here. So the flu can be spread to others um, up to six feet away by droplets. So when I cough or sneeze or talk, I s expel droplets of, of fluid and those can land on people and, uh, and people, they can land on people's face or their hands. They put their hand by their face and they can get the flu. Um, they can touch an object where the flu uh, virus has been just um, introduced to. Um, and the flu virus is probably the most contagious the first three to four days after the illness begins in the person that um, gets the illness. Um, most people will be able to infect people beginning a day before their symptoms and up to seven to five to seven days after becoming sick. So you don't even know, and you know from the past when you've gotten the flu, you, somebody gets it in the family and the whole family gets it. That's just the way it goes. Um, it's important with the flu as everything else to disinfect things around your house. Um, because people can spread the virus or it can be on surfaces. I don't know if you've seen some of these ads on TVs. Well, there have been a lot of ads for um, things to clean surfaces in your house. There's one, one particularly that struck me was there's one called, I think it's Microban, and, and, and I, I don't mean to speak bad about a product, but if you notice in the advertising, it does not kill, it does not kill the vi viruses on a sustained basis, but it does bacteria. So if you use that, and you keep using it, then you're fine. But if you use it and think it's going to protect your surfaces around your house for 24 hours, it's only going to do that for bacteria. So it's important to, you know, kind of pay attention to these things. So COVID transmission is very similar in that people who are in close contact with one another and can um, have droplets um, land on them um, either from coughing or sneezing or talking or singing um, can get the, the d disease. Um, we've all heard about the people that are asymptomatic but somehow have spread the COVID-19 virus and that's one of those things that it's, it's still being studied. It's they obviously have a viral load, if you will. That's what we call it when you have a virus that gets in your system and starts um, duplicating or replicating. Um, they obviously have a viral load that they can spread, um, but they're not exhibiting symptoms. And that's just, a, you're not going to know that. You're not going to, the only, again, the only way you can protect yourself is to wear the masks and wash your hands frequently with an antiviral type of um, um, substance. So when you talk about prevention, and I've been kind of interjecting some things around here, but for the flu, um, annually getting your flu shot, it takes about two weeks from the time you get the flu shot for your immunity to be full force. Our flu season is generally January-ish here. Um, so we start giving the flu shot back, you know, like in September, October, so that people are immune when, when things do hit. Um, I, I thought it was a very interesting question that um, came up when people were saying, well, if I get my flu shot, will that help to protect me against COVID-19? And all I could find in the research was that um, it, 
there was some research that said it does not affect the susceptibility to COVID-19. However, that research could change tomorrow because I'm sure people are doing research on this topic all the time. But for right now, it doesn't look like the flu shot will help you. It would be nice. Um, also for the flu, you know, washing your hands after touching surfaces, as I mentioned, because the virus can be sitting on the surface. Um, cover your nose and mouth when sneezing so you don't spread it, spread whatever to other people. And then clean surfaces with that antiviral solution. I don't know if you've noticed, but um, it seems to me, and maybe I'm missing something, but since all of this COVID, when people have been more um, aware of their coughing and sneezing and washing their hands, we hopefully have had less colds and things in the spring and summer. Hopefully going into the fall and winter, it, it continues that way because people are more aware of picking up germs and now they're not labeled as germaphobes like they would have been in the, in the past. So COVID prevention is very similar to flu. Um, washing your hands um, with soap and water. Um, it, like after you go to the grocery store, um, because you're touching things there, for instance, um, using hand sanitizer that has at least 60% of alcohol is fine. So when I go to the, uh, I haven't been lately, but when I go to the grocery store and get back in my car, I have a little bottle of hand sanitizer in my car and I, I clean my hands with that. Um, avoid the close contact with people that are not in your immediate you know, circle um, within the six feet covering your mouth and your nose with a mask when you're around others. There's a lot of talk about this. Just think about it. When you, when you breathe, when you cough, when you sneeze, when you talk, when particles come out of your nose as well as out of your mouth. So it's very important to cover both your nose and your mouth so that dr those droplets cannot escape. Um, and get into the air to infect other people. There's people that wear the masks uh, with their nose hanging out, you know, that's just not, that's not gonna cut it. Um, if you sneeze or you cough, obviously putting your hand into your elbow, if you don't have a mask on, um, and then um, cleaning your hands after that. Um, surfaces, as I mentioned, can have viral particles on them that people could touch. Um, it's also important, especially if you're going out in public on a regular basis, to be watching yourself for signs of fever, cough, shortness of breath, or other symptoms. Um, as you know, when you're going to a healthcare, when you're going to the clinic or the hospital for something, you're being asked about all your symptoms and you're having your temperature checked. And some of the um, employers, um, it's the same thing. And that was the CDC guidance. Um, that was out there is to try to protect your workforce, it, besides wearing masks and keeping your hands clean. Um, you've probably all seen a lot of the news about vaccines that are being developed and tested. The FDA has uh, tried to fast track the approval of a lot of the vaccines, as well as the test products for COVID-19 in order to help people faster. Um, I think some of, the, some of the vaccines they're talking about will possibly be ready December, January. There have been some vaccines that were in testing and the testing had to stop because of issues with the vaccine. So it's all over the board on that. I haven't, and there's probably more up-to-date information um, on that specifically, but I do not have that here. So let's talk about children. Um, in occupational medicine, we don't generally deal with children, but we, everybody has children and we all have to think about this. Children don't get as severely sick with COVID-19 as adults do and, this, and especially elderly people do, um, but they can get sick. Um, there have been children that have had, you know, been in the ICU because of, of COVID. Usually they've had comorbidities or, or as, you know, such as asthma or something like that. There has been though a very serious but in rare medical condition that causes inflammation of the blood vessels of children as a result of the COVID-19 infection called, it's called multi-system inflammatory syndrome. And I don't, we, we have a similar thing in adults that happens when blood vessels get um, inflamed because of the COVID-19 
illness. I know you probably heard of, there was, there was one, it was an actor, I can't remember his name, where he lost a leg and then subsequently lost his life to COVID-19, but he lost his leg initially because of the of vascular complications of COVID-19. So it's nothing to be, uh, to take lightly. Um, babies under one might be more likely, again, this is a, you know, conjecture, with, uh, to have a severe illness just because their immune system is not fully developed. And if they have other um, issues, um, such as asthma, they probably wouldn't have diabetes yet, but um, some of the birth defects, heart disease, immunosuppression, um, some of these kids that have multiple chronic illnesses, um, and also some kids that are obese are more likely to have more severe illness from COVID-19. And you would protect these children just around any other disease process, um, but just be, you know, a little bit more careful with them with in right now with COVID-19. <coughs> Excuse me, that's not COVID-19. Um, the most common symptoms of COVID-19 for children have been found to be fever and cough. So as you know, if you think about it practically, if children are home or are sick in that they have a fever or a cough or really bad runny nose, um, they, should, they should stay home from school and wait until 24 hours have passed without a fever, without the use of uh, Tylenol or Advil. <coughs> Excuse me. The sick children should also be kept away from well children at home, if you can. I mean, I know how crazy that is. Um, just because they can pass that disease. And like I mentioned before, when in the past, when one person in the family would get the flu, everybody would get the flu. But if you can keep them away, especially with the COVID-19 illnesses out there, you might have less uh, cranky children and crying children. Uh, proper hand washing around the house is important. I think everybody's amped that up in their house because everybody's been aware of this but it still is important in your household um in recent years as a um, courtesy people have been you know sneezing or coughing into the elbow of their arm on the you know instead of just coughing out if we can try to do that in the home it would actually be better too from a disease um, exposure perspective um Again, cleaning surfaces that are touched by family with antiviral uh, solutions. You know, the, the doorknobs, the uh, kitchen counters, um, the railings on the stairways, the things that are most commonly touched by everybody, just a once a day, just wipe down um, just quickly would be very helpful to um, stem some of the, the illness. Um, I will mention, you know, with the schools, there's been a lot of controversy, open, closed, virtual, not. Um, in the schools, I know they're trying to do a lot of these things and it, it, it's, for, it's just very hard for them. And it's, just, it's harder when you have um, smaller children um, on top of it. And then the kids are wearing masks in school, but it, it just is very hard. And you know, it's hard to, to try to do the schooling at home. So all of this is adding to a lot more of stress and that's another thing I don't have on the slides, but the stress that's created by all of this is really um, weighing people down, especially the longer this goes on. So now I have a couple pages of references here. And as you can see, most of them are from the CDC. Um, and um, in, if you have a specific uh, question, this, these are probably the places to find um, the answers. So I'm going to stop there. Yeah, I'm gonna stop there and see if there's any questions. Um, did anybody have any questions about, um, I, one thing I didn't mention about COVID-19 was the optimal time between exposure to someone with COVID-19 and someone developing symptoms is between two to 14 days with a sweet spot about five to seven days. So just because you got exposed yesterday and you don't have symptoms today doesn't mean anything, you know, in, in the scheme of things. But that five to seven days, that's where most of the people start getting symptoms. It's similar to the flu.
you know, it, as I mentioned with the flu. So I'm sorry, I didn't put that on one of the slides, but that's another fact in, in, in the comparison piece. And did you see the, I'm not sure if you saw the question, but I can read it. Is okay. it true that after 10 days of being positive, you are no longer contagious? Well, there's some schools of thought that say that, and some say 14. The, the best way to go is the, especially for the people that were symptomatic, this doesn't count for asymptomatic, but is if they do not have symptoms for over 24 hours, you're going to be most likely test, you're going to test positive for COVID for several months afterwards, just because there's dead viral particles that get picked up and um, read as a positive. So I would, I would err on the side of the, the 14 days versus the 10 days. But again, if you look at the CDC and, and go with what the CDC says, you know, as of today, that's the best science. Okay, and there's another question from one of our readers here is, will Aurora have flu tests this fall? Um, do you mean flu shots or flu testing for the flu um, infection? Can you clarify? Um, it doesn't in the email, so maybe you could cover both, please. So Aurora has been giving flu shots for our own employees, but also for employers. Um, if you go in and you are ill, there is testing for flu infection. There's actually a test that's being developed to be able to check for flu and or COVID together when hopefully that's, um, that's going to be available when flu starts hitting. But yes, there's, there's going to be testing for flu in the um, you know, like the urgent cares or the EDs. I don't know about the, um, like the primary care offices though, honestly. All right, great. Um, next question would be, this person joined in late, but wanted to confirm that people can be contagious immediately after exposure or the 24 or the 48 hours window before. I hate to say never, um, but from the information that I've read, it's usually that two days, which would be your 48 hours, but I don't know if I would want to take a chance in that first 24 hours and expose myself to that person. So the, the data says starting at two days, but I would just be careful. But if you do a test for that person that got exposed in that 24 hours, they may, may not test positive. And if they have a negative test, you can't bank on it either because when you get to 48 hours or 72 hours, they may remember I told you about that, that five to seven day window, anywhere up to that seven days or even up to 14 in some cases, rare cases, they will test positive. It's, it's so hard because it's, there's no exact science on some of this. We know a lot, but we don't know everything about this. And that's what's making it so hard to stem um, the spread of the infection. All right, so the next question I'm seeing also, so, um, if an acquaintance has tested positive for COVID and it has been two weeks since the start of the symptom, still has no taste or smell, is it safe for a person who hasn't had COVID to be around this person, say, in the same vehicle? It, it should be, again, as long as that person is not having any symptoms still. So if they're not having a cough or congestion or fever, especially the fever part, they're not having any of those symptoms for over 24 hours without any kind of uh, fever reducing things. That Remember I mentioned that taste or smell can last for several, loss of taste or smell can last for several months, but it doesn't mean they're still infected. All right, do we have any other questions? All right, 
right. Not seeing any, I wanted to say thank you so much. We really appreciate you taking the time and coming and sharing all of this wisdom you have with the rest of us. And thank you very much for having me. It was fun. All right. Stay healthy. Yep. Wear your masks on your nose. <laughs>